Yeah, last time, Corla, last week I met with the SOS uh, Callan Road, Kilkenny, in relation to the services that they deliver. Now, it was originally founded on the basis of delivering uh, lifelong services of various kinds uh, to people with intellectual uh, disabilities. But over the last number of years, because of the lack of funding and the fact that the, they're not being paid for the services that they deliver, uh, they're, they're now under threat in terms of the range of services that they have and in terms of dealing with the different clients that are now coming forward. And they're unable to provide that lifelong uh, uh, service to their clients. Now, the SOS uh, is an extremely good service. It works efficiently and it works well. And the manager there, uh, Francis Coughlin, has done everything in his power to ensure that the money that he gets is spread evenly and deals with the issues. So right now he has 50 cases, business cases as they call them, but really these are cases requesting funding from the department to satisfy the need of an intellectually uh, challenged individual. And there is no decision from the department in relation to these cases. In fact, to bring their services up to where they were, they would require one million euros just to keep them at standstill. And then they would have to have those 50 cases uh, dealt with immediately with full funding being granted. There's no respite care for those that use the service. And they're urgently asking that you would consider providing the funding to have two respite beds available when they're needed for those that are attending uh, that service. To give you an example, Minister, I raised this issue with the Taoiseach, where a client of that service for 30 years is now in St Luke's General Hospital since last November. He's medically discharged and there is no place for him within SOS because they can't provide the funding. The infrastructure is there, the building is there, they require immediate funding on that project for €600,000. It's costing nearly €2,000 a day in that hospital setting, which is inappropriate for the man's needs. He's not getting the services he requires. And the parents are deeply concerned that this is a trend that's emerging within that organisation that is so well respected and so supportive of the parents and the clients. And they were deeply concerned and expressed their worry that, you know, as the parents are the, the guardians of the children in care, who will look after them if they go on? Who will look after them after their lives are over? And this is a question that has to be answered. And I think that Francis Coughlin and SOS deserve a direct reply and a direct response. And I want to say this, I'll ask Kim Corla, the management of the services in the context of the HSE is absolutely appalling. Absolutely appalling. They're willing to stand to one side and allow these services deteriorate, allow people to be in inappropriate settings uh, in hospitals. And there is literally no response. When I asked the Thishub that morning, I was taken back uh, by the cold way he answered that question. I followed him out of the chamber and I gave him the written note as to the difficulties facing that individual. But I'm talking about the overall plan to deal with the life care services that are required by the clients of SOS. And I'm asking that you address the issue comprehensively and that you deal with the fact that this man is in hospital since last November. That's a separate issue, but he's an SOS client. So, and Tara. Thanks. Um, Thanks very much, Oscar and Corley. <coughs> Thank you to Deputy John McGuinness. <coughs> and I'm taking this on behalf of uh, Minister Finian McGrath. <coughs> I want to thank Deputy McGuinness for raising this important issue and for giving the opportunity outlined position in relation to the provision of respite services in Kilkenny <coughs> to clients of SOS. The government is ongoing priorities to safeguard a vulnerable people in care of the health service. We are committed to providing services and support for people with disabilities who will imperil our lives to be, live independently. Respite services is an important part of the range of services supporting people with disabilities and their families. Short breaks can also provide an opportunity for individuals to meet new people, widen their so social circle and gain new expert 
experiences. Respite care is crucial for helping to reduce family stress, as we all know, preserve the family unit and provide stability. The need of the increased respite services is acknowledged and the HSE continues to work with all the service providers to explore various ways of responding to the needs in line with the budgets available. As part of the ongoing service provision this year, the HSE will provide over 182,500 respite days and 32,662 day respite sessions to families in need right across the country. In 2018, there was a significant improvement in respite and an additional 10 million was provided to fund 12 new respite homes. One of these in each of the CHO areas, plus an additional three houses in the Greater Dublin area to respond to the very high demand for respite for these areas. These 12 additional houses are providing additional respite for families and that, that need it. This year, the HSA will also fund a number of alternative respite services. They are particularly the important solutions, such as summer camps, evenings and, evening and Saturday clubs, benefiting hundreds of children and adults. The number of adult services using continually increased services, using transfers from children to adult services. Therefore, the impact on the level of respite existing services needs to be revised. The budget allocation of SOS in 2019 is a criteria of 10.7 million, representing an increase of 4.5 on 2018 allocation of 10.2 million. The allocation provides for the maintenance of the 2018 level of approved services from 2019. South East Community Health Care are proactively working with the, S with the SOS C CEO and team to develop a plan which will continue to resolve the organisation financial position in a structured way, a structured way over a time-defined a time period. In addition, the respite house in Tolo County Carlow is expected to open in due course to ensure that continuing provision of respite services across the South East and the Task Force Grief has been established to review this respite services and ensure delivery in a fair and ethical way to meet the needs of the service users. SOS Kilkenny is a member of this Task Force Group. And then I just say to Deputy McGuinness, if he, would, if he wants to forward me uh, some of the information regarding the, the person he spoke about, I shall bring it on to, uh, to Minister Harris's attention straight away. Thanks. Deputy McGuinness, is two minutes. Uh, last count, Cora, I thank the, the Minister for the response, but she's been misled by the HSE. And I would ask that you would ring Dr Morgan of the HSE, Jeanette Dwyer of the HSE, Kate Killeen White of the HSE. Each of those three who are managing the services in the SOS, in, a part of SOS in Kilkenny, and ask them why that man is in hospital. Ask them why the services are being continually run down in SOS. Ask them why the 50 business cases are not being taken and approved. Ask them why is there no engagement directly with the SOS to assist Francis Coughlin to deliver the services that they have committed to. You say that the budget is there, they're keeping the levels of 2018. The level of 2018 is, you know, it, 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 it does not reflect the activity that there should be in that service. It's a reduction of the services from 2017, a further reduction from 2016. So you're not inaccurate to say it, but actually it's very misleading to say that the services are 2018 level. We don't want them at 2018 level. We want to fulfil the commitment given by those that started the service to deliver a lifelong service to those that need it. And that is not being done and it's not being achieved. People and their families are actually appalled at the HSE that they have not responded. They're showing no humanity and no compassion whatsoever. And it's hard to stand by and listen to that type of answer from the HSE or the Department of Health when they know full well that the services are pushed to the pin of their collar and that they're not able to deliver, not what they want to deliver, but what's being demanded of them. What's being demanded of them because the clients are turning up in their numbers requiring the service and the HSE is turning a blind eye. Now I go back to the management again, last count Corla. The management have to answer the question why that is happening. 
They have to be made accountable. They have to be transparent. And I will encourage you again, Minister, to please make those three phone calls. Bring some form of humanity, compassion and relief into what is trying to be achieved uh, by the SOS in Kilkenny. Minister, two minutes. And thanks, thanks again, Mr. Concorda. And just again to reiterate, uh, Minister McGrath is very aware of the importance of access to planned respite and assures the Deputy that everything will be done possible to help people who need that respite, particularly families who on a daily basis um, have the ongoing um, need for children and, and adults to be taken into respite just for that break. Uh, I have taken down, uh, 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 if the Deputy would like to just repeat the last uh, person he mentioned on the HSE, I got the force to, I certainly will go back to Minister Harris and ask him to uh, make contact with these relevant people in the HSE and ask that the manager of the SOS uh, services be uh, ensured that the services that they're providing for at present is not adequate enough, particularly for the young man, I think, uh, who needs the service, who unfortunately is not able to take up that because he's, he, there just doesn't, doesn't seem to be the funding there. But if uh, Deputy would mind giving me the last name of the last, the last person, I got the force to, I just missed out on the last one, and I will make sure that uh, I'll go back to Minister Harris and ask him to engage with uh, the CEO of the area as well for the HSE. Uh, Jeanette Dwyer and Dr. Morgan is the uh, national director. Um, and it's, it's not just, if I may, I can quote, not just about that man, it's actually about the overall services within the SOS. Thank you. Thank you, Minister.